Residents and welcome to the Dr. DC Podcast. My name is producer Richard and next to me is the doctor himself. Hello. This year, like each year prior, we will be releasing an episode for every day for the 12 days leading up to Christmas. And for this episode, we are joined by one of our favorite fathers, Mr. Dave Rossi. Thank you so much for joining us, Dave. Thanks for having me back, guys. Yeah, not to project too much. (laughs) One of our favorite fathers. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I like him more than my father. (laughs) Dash will leave the room. Yeah, yeah. Dash is banned. He's uh, he's in the house. Yeah, yeah Dash will move over. He's our dad now. <laughs> it's my daddy now. <laughs> okay, that just took a turn. Yeah, one of many. Yeah, it's good, good to see you again, Richard. You too, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice it's nice to see you, Dave. It's been it's been a little bit too well, long. It has been too long. I'm glad that you could join us for those. It's been a long time. I think about you guys often, and uh, uh, you know I love the show, so it's we always appreciate. fun to join you. Well, I, I mean, I let you know this. I, I sent you a message, but I've been thinking about you a lot because I'm re-watching Enterprise, and at the end of every episode, big letters, David oh, yeah. Rossi right there. <laughs> every 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 hour, I get like a David Rossi. Just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give it time. You'll start to hate it. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. Uh, Unbelievable. Well, do we want to get in some questions? Yeah. While you start on the questions thing, I'm going to have my first of three. Oh, yeah. First of three. First of three three nugs. That's Um, right. I think I'm just going to go classic barbecue sauce for this guy. All right. Well, now, first, we're going to Facebook. Go to the face in the book. Go to the Facebook. You got to wait before you shove that in your face. Uh, first question. Oh, we're riding the waves into the first question, which comes from Trey Shove. My mouth is still full. I, I know. <laughs> I don't know why you thought you could do that. You know, you talk constantly here. Uh, first question is from Trey Shove, who asks, which villain do you think is the most underused considering their potential? Oh, interesting. Dave, when you think of, when you think of sort of, um, underappreciated or underused think of producer um, richard super villain yeah okay uh super villains who comes to mind you know a, a villain that i love that i'd always love to see more of is amazo right the, um, the the android that can absorb the powers of the justice league yeah and and i think there's a lot of potential there for him that's untapped i know in the animated series they did a really interesting take on amazo mm-hmm uh, that he, you know, kind of gains uber sentience and and his ability to absorb things took him in a completely different direction than just the the kind of two dimensional. I take your powers and beat you up with them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Kind of approach. So I think Amazo would be one that really jumps to mind a lot. Yeah, that animated series kind of he, he sort yeah he basically he gained a sort of like complete omniscience, like almost like a Manhattan kind of like could see the strings. Yeah. Sort of thing going on. Yeah, that's very cool. God, Richard, do you have one? I mean, I always go back to Ventriloquist. Right. You like the Ventriloquist. I really love the Ventriloquist. I think there's just something so eerie about that that I want more to it. Yeah. That he thinks he's like working for and taking orders from the thing he's controlling. Yeah. Which is also, I think, when you you talk about Batman and the things that make a good Batman villain, it's something that reflects something within Batman. Right. And I think it's his relation to to like Batman and Bruce Wayne. Oh, right. Yeah. Which who's actually in control. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is a really nice sort of dichotomy, which I I, I think Ventriloquist is just such a good resemblance of that. Right. I think for me, it's Shadow Thief. Oh, wow. Hawk. Oh, good one. <coughs> Hawk How's Man that nugget villain. doing? Yeah, I know. <laughs> God, I have to do two more this episode. Oh, yeah. So, yeah Shadow Thief, uh, his name is Carl Sands. He has a device called the Dimensio Meter that allows him to move in and out of the shadow realm. He can control and manipulate and also move through shadows. Um, it can make him intangible. It also like makes him two-dimensional. So there, I mean, for physicists out there, there's probably something interesting in that. Kind of like the Flash villain Folded Man a little bit in that way. Um, but I, I feel like he only ever really comes up 
in Hawkman stories. We obviously get very few of those. And so as a right. result, you just don't see him that much, but it's a cool power and it's tough to beat. You can't punch a shadow. You can't like he he has the potential to be one of the most sort of difficult or powerful characters for the Justice League to deal with. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's Shadow Thief for me. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. He's very uh, cool. I love that. Uh, and the new you? Hawkman one and the new Hawkman one run was really good. It was so good. Love that one. Yeah, yeah. we were talking about that for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Really like yeah. And dad agrees with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you never you never respected dad the way that he deserved. No, we're, we can't go into supernatural. <laughs> that too. We can't do both. It's too much. <laughs> Reed, did you college? watch Supernatural? Oh, my God. So, Dave. Oh, yeah. It's, Dave's behind Dave, the ball. It's been it's been a while. Not only did I watch all of supernatural it, since COVID started, but Richard and I have started a supernatural rewatch podcast. Nice. Wow. I, I am. I'm so invested. <laughs> I've only seen the pilot. Oh, oh, see, he was in the same well, boat. Go check out ghost facers. You could take the journey with us. Yes. <laughs> yes. I am going to do that. <laughs> I think you get, you get episode two and three and you're hooked. Yeah. That's what happened to you. Yeah, it's true. I watched episode two and three and then I watched all 15 seasons. Oh in the course my of God. three, four months. <laughs> in, yeah. In like three months. <laughs> Now that's a lot of nuggets. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. Let's just refer to everything now in a series of nuggets. <laughs> I give this episode Speaking of a which, two out of five nuggets. Uh, all right. Next question comes from the most interesting resident. Uh, Roland Sabos. Yeah, of course it's Roland Sabos. Who else would it be? <laughs> it's of course from Roland Sabos who asks, <laughs> "Justice League Unlimited season three. What corner of the DC universe would you have explored in animated form? Thanks and joyeux. Doc, Doc Metz. Joyeux? Yeah, joyeux. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. So Justice, I know French. I'm Canadian. Justice League Unlimited was the cartoon. Um, it was the seasons of Justice League, that animated one, where they expanded it beyond just what the core team was. It was like every character was in the Justice League. And you got... Uh, in the first season of it, it was really about them versus like Cadmus and the government. And it was sort of like an arms race kind of thing. And uh, and then the second season was about like the secret society and Luthor was sort of going after getting Brainiac back. It ends up being a big dark side thing. Mm -hmm. If you got another season of that big unlimited series, where should where would you want to take it? It's hard. I think it's hard to to outdo that last season in mm. in terms of scope, unless you wanted to maybe like go on a Green Lantern journey and explore a lot of the Green Lanterns and do some really cosmic kind of space stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but but an area that I think was ripe that they they kind of touched on in, in the Justice League cartoon, but not necessarily in Justice League Unlimited is Atlantis. And its relationship to the world. And right. I think that could have made for some really interesting and, and fun episodes where you get to to kind of touch on those characters in the Aquaman family that you don't that you don't normally get to see if you're not an Aquaman fan. Yeah, it's it's true. Atlantis is very side. I mean, even Aquaman as a character is very sidelined in there. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good point. I think I was maybe going to go like go. I've, uh, this is the supernatural influence go a little bit more like heaven and hell you know we see a bit Ooh. of tartarus and like some places like that in some episodes of justice league but let's explore more of them you know like the phantom zone let's explore you know actual heaven maybe get zoriel or phantom stranger some yeah, of those very cool kinda in uh, the specter maybe maybe lean a bit more into magic right um they brought in Tala, who is a Phantom Stranger adjacent character in that final season, but maybe it would have been cool to do more magic stuff. Would have been neat. Yeah. Yeah. Or a Justice League Dark. Just, yeah. Yeah. Very yeah, cool. Totally. That's awesome. Richard? Yeah. I, I would love to do some, uh, to them to go into like the medieval realms. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be. They really had a cool. couple of cool episodes with Morgan Le Fay. And yeah, it would give you the taste of yeah. that. But. I want yeah more, more it. from it yeah I think that would be awesome get some Shining Knight in there oh God I love Shining Knight and now my <laughs> my daughter recognizes Shining Knight now because really? of that show she goes oh, Shining Knight 
Which yeah, was, and then you can put Jason Blood in there, and you can work a lot of people in. Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. I'm all about that. Yeah, love that. Great answers. Awesome. All right. Well, let's. Pretty leave. good question. Great answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really carried that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave Facebook and head on over to Twitter. Twitter. And we've got two questions from <laughs> It's Braydon. Yes, the donkey rises. Yeah. God. Oh, love it. Uh first question from Braydon is Let's talk about the King of the Seas and his upcoming movie sequel, Aquaman 2. What do you want to see in the follow-up story of Aquaman and Black Manta? Right. So what what did you're wearing the shirt? You got an Aquaman yeah. shirt on. What yeah. did you think of the first movie? What did you think of the Aquaman movie? Uh, you know, look, I thought it was a serviceable fun movie. I wow. I know you, you I think I, I think we're done here. <laughs> I I know. I know. I I'm, I'm peeing all over your leg. I'm sorry, but um <laughs> You know, that his version of Aquaman is a little too frat boy for me. It's right. it kind of struck me yeah. as the same tone as Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern. It's a little too, right. wow. you know. I I think they kind of missed the uh, missed the boat. Wow, that's a <laughs> hey, <I'm here>. sorry, right. <laughs> an unwitting one. But um, but the movie is fun. I mean, yeah. it's not like it doesn't have its its charming moments. And Black Manta was great. Yeah, um, I mean that was a really that was a whole great scene. But I just again, I'd I'd like to get into more about. The relationship. I love the idea of the relationship that that Atlantis can have with the surface world. I mean, yeah. it is a world power. Yeah, it is. You know, I, it's probably the strongest country on the planet. And yeah. and we and we don't really kind of get into those things. Like like how does the mascara fit into the world? And they kind of touch on it every once in a while, but but we never really get to to see that you know, how that would really work. And I think that would be a, a fun way to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it would be neat to balance like the sort of big, cause he's the King now as yeah. of the end of the movie. So to balance the big, like what are your political duties and responsibilities with the very personal, you killed my dad, black Manta kind of relationship. Yeah. And does he bring, and do you bring Aquaman's family into it? Like, do you bring, yeah. like, do you have him have a child? Do you, tell that black manta story i mean right. obviously not maybe not <laughs> as they did in the comics but uh, <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe not full like uh baby murder but uh, <laughs> <laughs> pull it back a little yeah yeah that wouldn't work for like a pg-13 i don't understand <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean we've talked about it too i think i think our we've got hopes for something but hopes and also a little bit of like anxiety about something a little bit more internal yeah. and pared down and personal hopes because I think it would be cool uh, anxiety because can Momoa do it yeah. like <laughs> exactly wise. yeah <laughs> yeah I love him to death and he's great for action but like I'm I don't know if he can do it. I, I I want him to prove me wrong. I, I'm not rooting against him, but that's sort of where I come down on it. Here's anyway. a question. Do you think in this next movie he's going to lose his arm? Oh, God. Do you know what? You know what? Superhero movies have a hard time with stakes because yeah. they're all franchises and you want them to keep going forever. But Aquaman, in his comic continuity, has a built-in, like, oh, shit moment yeah. that you could totally use. Yeah. I, I, I mean... I think you have to have him lose his arm, if not in this next movie, in the one after that. Yeah. But like, I I don't think you could do it without that. I think so too. Because then you also you get a couple of cool special effects scenes yeah. with the hook, and he can it, he got that hook from Star Labs that could shoot yeah. and like move. Yeah, it had the uh, war, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think you have to. Now, do you do it where Manta cuts it off, which would be? like sort of like yeah uh post blackest night kind of era or do you do it like the original one where charybdis steals his power and then makes piranhas eat his hand and he can't stop them because yeah. he can't talk to them oh <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. that's interesting and then also another question is is i mean we got a taste of it at the very end of the previous movie which is now the uh, that uh, that scientist is who's been obsessed with uh, i can't remember the name dr of shin dr shin has yeah. been obsessed with him the whole time is the next movie going to be now that there's no longer a civil war, but what there is is the the land is coming down to the water, and there's a fight that's going to happen. Well, because they've, be I mean, a lot of people still don't believe Doctor Shin, but there's yeah. confirmation that Atlantis exists because they threw all of their warships and garbage yeah, back on the yeah. shore. Right? That was Orm's right. 
first. But move. even then, they thought that it was a natural disaster. Yeah. But, you know, people do know Aquaman exists. There's now all the wreckage of the warships and yes. that. They talk about it at the end of the movie, of, of the Atlantean warships. Oh, so, yes. yeah, I mean, the idea of the surface being like, oh, shit, though, this is a real thing. Because, I mean. Yeah. yeah that, which plays into what Dave was talking about. Yeah. Like, how do those and where does things... Justice League And where does Justice League fit into it? Oh. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a whole other piece, right? I, I think it would be really interesting to see sort of like Earth trying to how do they fight somebody who's want both both in a in an area that they don't really understand, like, like the surface doesn't really yeah. understand how to, and they can't really exist there. No, yeah. and they and 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 their technology is nowhere near as advanced. So how do they get down there, or do they try to pull them up to the surface? Like I don't know. I think that battle is going to happen in in the next couple of movies at least. I do think that the future movies are going to. I mean, they touch on it a bit as a motivation in the yeah. first movie, but I think the next movies also must have some sort of ecological bent to them because that's the whole thing is that the surface world is ruining. Yeah. Like they were content to be left alone. Right. Surface world calls them to action, right? Though I mean, are they gonna do like are they gonna do like full crazy and do like raise Atlantis? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know. That would be dope. That would be really cool. Also, like our So they- cut off Momoa's arm. Yeah. No, not in the movie. Cut off Momoa's arm. Go method. <laughs> Jason Momoa's arm. Yeah. Uh method acting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and raise Atlantis. Yeah, you hear us, DC? Actually, raise Atlantis. Yeah, the actual Atlantis, and then film there on location. Yeah, exactly. I think these. So DC still hasn't reached out to you guys, right? To- Can you believe that? It's been years. I'm, just, I'm listening to this conversation, and I'm baffled. I know. I know. I know. Maybe we should be doing a Star Trek podcast. Maybe that. Oh yeah, we need another podcast. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like then we could just be like, Dave. We know you're listening. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's it. Um, all right, let's go to the next question. All right. And the last question. Okay. Which is from Braydon, who asks, what is with Martian Manhunter's obsession with Oreos? Yes, of course, they are delicious. Just why Oreos in particular? Well, well they're Chacos. That's, I, yeah, Dave beat me to it. That's right. Uh, due, due to licensing. Yeah, they're called they're called chocos. You know what's also very funny is that that's what you and your wife call anything chocolate to your daughter. Yeah, we call anything chocolate as a choco. Yeah, yeah. So your daughter is obsessed with chocos. As she well. loves chocos. Yeah. She's she's quite the Martian manhunter. God, I hope not. <laughs> Every day as a parent, I just cross my fingers and hope. To God that she'll be a Martian woman hunter. It will save. <laughs> I'll put years back on my life if she's not a man hunter. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So they couldn't call them Oreos. Dave's right. They're Chacos. Mm-hmm. Um, why? It was that era. It was like the Boaha League, right? It was like the funny, the yeah. Giffen Dematis kind of era with like Blue Beetle and Booster Gold and Guy Gardner and. I have a little hero clicks sculpt. I don't know if I can see it right now, but it's it, it's him sitting on that. You ever see that? Or there was that cover where he's sitting on the throne of Chacos. You ha- and you've got that. I, I think so. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's I keep amazing. I'll be Did right you back. See the shirt, yeah, yeah. The, the denim shirt that he's wearing. I just real realized what it said on it. No, what does it say? On? It says, I think it says Deep Space Nine season one. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Love that. Oh my god! Whoa! He does. He's got him. Yeah, let me see. Oh, that's. Martian Manhunter on the Chaco throne. That's incredible. <laughs> wow, so appropriate. Oh, it's a, it may say does your shirt say Deep Space Nine season like seven or one or something like that? Oh, uh yeah, this is such a comfortable shirt. It's a uh, season seven, yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I I don't know that I have a good reason for why, other than in the story, it's just that he becomes he just it's a thing he didn't have on Mars, right? Yeah. It's uh, right. something uniquely, you know, Earth. It's just manufactured and processed. And really, those cookies are designed to make you want them. Yeah. So the yeah. idea of like someone who's even a step removed from us being like holy shit why do you eat anything else like <laughs> it's kind of amazing this like godlike character but who has a one weakness which is to chuck don't they do i might be making this up i might have just dreamed this but when he dies in final crisis when they have his funeral doesn't someone leave like a chaco or something i think like, so on on, on, his, on the on the the uh whatever on the casket the or like casket, on his yeah. like thing or whatever i think someone leaves like a chaco for him like it's so connected to him now 
That's so funny. When there was that Martian Manhunter series where he had split himself into different aspects of his personality, and one of them was called Mr. Biscuits, and he was a guy yes. that like loved sweet things. When 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 his when they split his personality, did they twist it first or did they just pull it apart? Oh yeah. And and, and they could also dunk his personality. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're about it's to a, release. It's, it's a great little uh, you know twist on I, I love the the fact that it's it's you know this alien comes to earth and there's yeah. so many things here to experience it, you know it's like that moment in wonder woman where she has the ice cream cone yeah. or yeah. uh or i don't know if you've ever seen the show farscape and there's an, oh, an episode yeah. where and there's an episode where they come back to earth and none of the aliens on the ship have ever had sugar right mm. and when they taste sugar they're like oh my god we got to market this we got to bring it back with us and sell it It'll be, <laughs> yeah you know? i i do love like the thing that like what are in all of sci-fi and that's like what are hu- what are the things humans are good at it's like uh, impulsive decisions that don't make sense yeah. and like self-destructive product <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> right. it's like that's what we're bringing to the universe <laughs> that's like, right <laughs> I mean, it's Christopher wrong, Columbus yay yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. oh god Oof. Uh, well that's the end of the questions but that is not the end of the episode we have I think that that Dave does not know about. Mm. It's time to come to the game of this episode. It's time for everyone's favorite game. Oh my God. Eyes wide. Yeah. <laughs> time for everyone's favorite game called Can You Guess the Name of the Character Based on How Someone Who Does Not Read Comic Books Can Describe That Character to Us? So <laughs> <laughs> it's a really catchy name. Really easy. Wait to a remember. minute. I just clucked. You're wearing a Skagway hat. Oh my God. Yeah. He is. I am, yeah. You are. God, I love everything this on him. I want this. This was all very like meticulously yeah, crafted. Absolutely. I, lo- I appreciate that. <laughs> I talked to a stylist. Yeah, I gave them right the parameters of who I was talking to. <laughs> I and, mean, they nailed it. Yeah. Well, we had to do the pre-interview before this too. Well, know? yeah, obviously, all of these are canned answers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, if you don't know this game, uh, basically, I send a photo of a DC character to my wife who nor- neither cares for nor reads any comic books. And she comes up with four clues based on what she sees. And we try to guess who she's talking about. I know the answers, but the doctor and Dave do not. Right. So I will give you some some clues and you can try to figure out. You can guess on every clue. Okay. And an unlimited amount of guesses if you want. But you try you have to try to figure out who we're talking about by the end of this. Okay. Okay. So clue number one. All right. Looks like a wiener, not an actual wiener. <laughs> mm. okay. Looks like a wiener. Um. No, uh, so <laughs> are they we get talking more specific, like? But you are have... we talking like a hot dog wiener? Do you think so? Like it's somebody wearing a red. Like it could be the Flash. You based right. on the color of the costume. They're or... like tall and thin, kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not could an be actual wiener. <laughs> plastic man could be, you know, something like that. Yeah. Well, why don't why that that could is that your guess for this round, Dave? I'll I'll say plastic man. I'll do a slight change and say elongated man. Neither. Okay. Okay. Clue number two. Has no peripheral vision from that giant collar. Okay. Tall, thin, giant collar narrows it down. There's yeah. A few characters that have that big high collar. Yeah. Nightwing had one, but he doesn't look like a wiener. No. No, he's yeah. usually better known for the other side. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like Martian Manhunter had the high collar for a bit. Mr. Miracles yeah. had the high collar for a bit. Um God, who are some other high collar characters? Interesting. Yeah. Um, the look like a wiener thing is throwing me. I think <laughs> that tends to happen. Um, oh God! You know, I'm going to say Martian Manhunter because if it's an image of him in like that one of those um, Martian physiology kind of things, that's true. Could All be right. Wiener. Could be Wiener in there. Okay. As well. Dave says Martian Manhunter. I'm going to say. Uh, I think I'm going to get his name wrong. But uh, is it Mr. Majestic? Is that? Uh, 
Ooh. Or no, no, sorry, uh, not Mr. Majestic. Uh, Bloodwind, the character that uh. Martian Manhunter was briefly. <laughs> no. Okay. But I like where you guys' heads are at, okay. for sure. All right, next clue. Knows how to tie at least one type of knot. Okay. I mean, it's not what? Slipknot, the man who can climb anything. No, <laughs> it is not. <laughs> But somebody with a lot of ties on there. Uh, what about uh, what about <gasps> Shazam? It's Shazam. It's not Shazam. I <sighs> I want to see what the next clue is, but I I might have a guess. You can guess. Is it Sonar? No. Ah. Whoa, that was a dig, deep dig there. Big big swing. Big swing. Clue number four. Okay. All right. Hangs around. <laughs> Wow, I'm stumped. <laughs> Big collar, looks like a wiener, hangs around. And something about knows how to tie something. Knows how to tie at least one kind of knot. Uh, damn it. Um, am I, is, is this going to bother me? Oh, yeah. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be furious. Oh, you know who else had a high collar was Dead Man. Okay. So dead, I love where your head's know. at, but no. Because <sighs> that could have worked with the trapeze thing, too. Yeah, there was yeah. a lot going yeah. There was a lot going for Dead Man. Um I'm gonna say oh shit, I don't I don't know what I'm gonna say. Uh the the not thing, like I I don't know. <laughs> Hooded justice? No. I, I have no idea. We have uh, uh, the secret clue. Oh, right, right, right. Which is what my wife would call this character based on just seeing it and having no information. Right. Her name for this character is Noose Douche. What? Noose Douche. Noose Douche? Yeah. And it's not Hooded Justice? <laughs> no. Who has a noose as part of their Yeah, name? who uses a noose? Is it that version? No, no, it's not that. I yeah I I I honestly don't know I'm I'm fresh out. It's Hangman. Hangman. Yeah. <laughs> Should have just said the word Hangman. Just <laughs> damn it. Hangman is an early Batman d uh, villain. Yeah. That's I like, don't know that I I don't know that I know Hangman. That's way back, isn't it? That's yeah. like '40s Batman, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was never gonna happen. I was never gonna get that. <laughs> I had to go hard. We had we had a couple couple experts here, yeah. so I, I needed to. That was good. I needed to take a big swing. That was good. Uh, all right. Well, that is the end of this episode. Dave, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great Christmas season. I hope you get through the Nuggets and uh, <laughs> and let's uh, let's stay in touch and and work something out. I, I love that. Yeah, stay stay safe and uh, say hi to the family and everything. Do you have anything you want to plug? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, watch, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, watch Enterprise on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, he's working on something. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, if you'd love to send us questions about Star Trek, uh, <laughs> you could do through our various social media platforms, such as our Facebook. Dr. DC Podcast. Our Twitter. At Dr. DC. Instagram. Dr. DC Podcast. Send us an email. Dr. DC Podcast at gmail.com. Hang out on our subreddit. Our subreddit. Slash doctor underscore DC. Of course, the doc phone is always open. 208-917-3238. That's 208-917-DCEU. If you're nasty. That's right. And of course, you can go to our website. DrDCPodcast.com or .ca. And buy our merch. Buy our merch. And of course, five-star reviews on iTunes. If you want more content from us, we have a Patreon account. Patreon.com slash DrDC. Two episodes that you can get every week, depending on the payment level that you have. Or you can just hang out and do our book club, because apparently that's a thing people Shut like. Shut up. It's fun. It's a $1 <laughs> level. It's a uh, good time. And if you want even more content from us that's maybe not DC related, and it's something that Dave Rossi is going to join, which is our whole other podcast. <laughs> That's right. Ghost, <laughs> Ghost Facers, a Supernatural rewatch. We're going through every single episode of Supernatural. We dive into real world monster mm -hmm. lore. We talk about behind the scenes stuff. It's a ton of fun. Absolutely. And we're on episode like 10 now? No. Uh, like 
we are recording this and yeah. tomorrow episode 14 comes out oh god yeah i still need yeah. to edit that we're, we're like we're working our way through the first season <laughs> yeah uh well that's it for this week thank you or today jeez that's oh, it god. for today oh god we've got so much more ahead of us <laughs> uh dave thank you so much thanks guys great to see you all right nice we'll talk to, to you later too. merry christmas merry christmas they always fight for what is right live with danger and adventure they are men of might this is a brain freeze podcast